Bloomberg, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Last week, the ability of the U.S. government to jail people without charge or trial was back in court. A group of reporters, scholars and activists, including Noam Chomsky and Chris Hedges, are suing the Obama administration over the controversial provision in the NDAA, the National Defense Authorization Act, saying it could allow for the indefinite detention of journalists and others who interact with certain groups. Well, last Wednesday, the Justice Department asked an appeals court to reverse a judge's earlier decision blocking indefinite detention, saying the ruling would hamper its ability to fight terrorism. The Obama administration has already won an emergency freeze of the ruling while the case is appealed. Well, on the same day, Wednesday, an event just after the court hearing was held in New York, featuring a panel of some of those who were in the courtroom to oppose the NDAA. Joining them was the Academy Award-winning filmmaker and activist Michael Moore and Pulitzer Prize-winning journalist Chris Hedges. We end today's show with their remarks. The case is known as Hedges versus Obama. Michael Moore began by responding to a question about how he got involved. How did I get involved? Well, I mean, I mean I've been involved uh, in this sort of thing for a very long time. Um, in, in general, in terms of these issues, I, I was the, uh, the, uh, the chair of the uh, American Civil Liberties Union in Flint. Uh, when I was you know, 19 or 20 years old. Um, <clears throat> and uh, what Chris said in the last panel here about the, uh, the corporate coup d'etat, uh, this is something I've been uh, talking about, trying to talk about for a couple of decades since Roger and me, uh, that something was afoot here and that we were going to have our uh, democratic way um, absconded uh, with. And, uh, and I agree with him that, that, um, that, that it has been successful. But I, all, I remain an optimist because I, I know history and I know that um, coup d'etats that were successful at first um, were eventually uh, overthrown. And I just want to use that word, overthrown, here publicly uh, tonight, so this can be replayed at my trial. Uh, <laughs> um, I, um, should we get that or? Yeah. Who ordered the pizza? Silence your phones, please, really? if you can. Really? <laughs> Let's ignore it. Um, well, I, uh, you know, I've had I've had to deal with um, uh, the issue of the police trying to suppress uh, information or to cause harm or on any of a number of different levels to those who try to uh, bring out the, the truth. Uh, um, I had a a small alternative newspaper in Flint, uh, Michigan, back in the 1970s. It was, uh, uh, our printer was uh, raided by the police, and they took the printing plates of our newspaper right off the press and, and searched and seized everything. And it was because we'd done an article on the mayor uh, using federal monies for his campaign uh, re-election. And, um, and so he went to a local judge, and the judge uh, approved the search warrant, and, and they grabbed uh, all of our stuff. Um, so uh, that was, uh, you know, one of my first experiences. Now that that particular incident, along that same year, with a, a CBS affiliate in Boise, Idaho, was also raided by the police. That um, the Reporters Committee for Freedom of the Press um, uh, asked me to, to work with them, and, um, and a law was passed, a shield law was passed. Uh, the, the following year to um, essentially prohibit police raids of newsrooms unless there's an actual crime like a murder or robbery or something going on. So, um, so I don't know. I mean, I could talk about this all night in terms of my own what my own personal experience has been. Um, you know, what I have learned since in terms of within the Bush administration and and uh, and what they did or were doing or how they tried to deal with uh, Fahrenheit 9/11, uh, um, uh, all the way from official government uh, things to um, uh, just the the sort of. Uh, 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 Propaganda that they uh, put out on me uh, in order to, um, you know, I think stir the pot of the unhinged, and um, and so I've I've um, I wrote about this in my last book and the uh, the, the number of um, not threats but actual assaults or attempted assaults that I've had to go through um, up to and including um, uh, an individual planning to blow up our house. Uh, in Michigan, and um, was only caught because one of his weapons went off uh, at his home, and a neighbor heard it and called the cops and uh, came in and they found all the fertilizer bomb stuff um, <clears throat> and, a, and a list of a, a small list actually of uh, liberal left people that he'd like to uh, assassinate with me at the top of the list, and then 
Uh, there was uh, um, Rosie O'Donnell, uh, <laughs> Janet Reno, and uh, Hillary Clinton. So I don't know how I ended up on the lesbian list, but uh, I'm happy and proud to be there. Um, <laughs> that's a joke. Um, just trying to. <laughs> well, anytime I talk about this, it's it's uh, it's, uh, it's, it's obviously not a pleasant thing to talk about. So, um, so I was very happy to hear about uh, this lawsuit uh, that these guys initiated. And Chris, of course, I've been a huge fan of his uh, for a long time. Please read his books. Pass his books around. Uh, this man is is our. He's our 21st century Noam Chomsky. Not that, that Noam isn't still in the 21st century. So, and, uh, and of course, an honor to, to sit here with, uh, with Daniel Ellsberg, who I was thinking about the other day, uh, Daniel. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen the documentary Hearts and Minds uh, about the Vietnam War. It's a great documentary. If you have a chance to see it. Um, and uh, they won the Oscar for Best Documentary that year. And when they went up on the stage to collect it, they uh, read from a telegram from the North Vietnamese, uh, um, uh, uh, thanking Americans to, you know, uh, which of course, as we, in, in these days, you would never even think of such a thing. It would be like, you know, uh, in the way that things are conflated now, that you would be reading something from Al Qaeda or whatever. But, um, but in this movie, Daniel appears in this movie and, and provides some very important lessons about uh, Vietnam. Not only just what he went through personally, but what uh, what this country was led through in terms of the lies that were told, and by not having a press that was active at first to expose the lies, we lost a lot of lives, and we participated in the slaughter of anywhere from two to three million uh, Southeast Asians. Um, but um, but he said he said something, and I, I was thinking about this because they're watch, watching the news on Egypt today, and talking about whether the United States, you know, we were for Mubarak, then we were against Mubarak. You know, we're, uh, you know, we're, and it's like, um, and somebody asked, you know, which, uh, you know, which side is right? You know, are we on the right side? And, um, and the same question was asked during Vietnam. You know, were, were we on the right side or not? Because maybe this was a people's uprising in South Vietnam. And Daniel said, the question is not uh, whether we're on the right side. The, the, the only question or point is, is that we are the wrong side. That's it. We are behind a lot of this madness. Our corporations um, are, are benefiting from it greatly. And the people um, who live in the Flint, Michigans of this world are suffering uh, uh, considerably. So I'm proud to be part of this and, and be supportive of it. And I'm very, of course, I've been very supportive of Bradley Manning from the beginning, helping to fund the, um, the fight. And I, I put up some of Julian Assange's uh, bail money. Um, I think, and we'll, we'll get to uh, you know WikiLeaks and, and whistleblowing in a minute, of course. Um, uh, before we do that, I wanted to re-ask my question from the last panel uh, about this drones memo. Um, you know, it, it, what's what's the end game with this? With, with the lawsuit here, uh, you know, if you win the lawsuit and the administration retains the power to assassinate American citizens, uh, you know, how is that a Pyrrhic victory? Uh, the memo is fascinating to read. Um, it uh, looks like it's written. Well, they won't release the memos yet. It's yes, the well, the white paper. The pre-memo white paper. The, the pre-memo white, right, pre <laughs> white paper. The what is because it's so uh, amateurish. It looks like it's written by a first-year law student. Um, I mean, you know, whatever you think of John Yoo, and I hope he burns in hell. Um, uh, he actually had a much more sophisticated uh, legal argument to torture human beings. Um, the, uh, look, the drone wars, uh, this, is, this is, it's not an example of uh, and, and I think this is true with the NDAA. I think it's true with the FISA Amendment Act. I think oh, we go all the way back. What they're attempting to do is legally justify what they're already doing. They have argued uh, that under the 2001 authorization to use military force act, they have a right to assassinate American citizens. I have read that act innumerable times, and uh, Bruce and Carl did, and none of us find that in the act. Uh, that is, uh, at, to be generous, a radical interpretation of the AUMF. And so what they're seeking to do is 
legally justify in the same way that you uh, was attempting to legally justify torture, uh, they're essentially looking for kind of legal cover. Um, and so I think it's all connected. Uh, it, it's all a part of uh, this very rapid descent into a frightening form of total corporate totalitarianism. Uh, and that is just writ large across the landscape. Uh, and as we go down, and they know we're going down, uh, look, I mean, you know, they, they, these forces are cannibalistic. 40% of the summer Arctic sea ice melts, and here we are literally watching the death throes of the planet, and these corporations like Shell look at it as a business opportunity. Um, they know only one word, and that's more. Uh, they have commodified everything. Human beings are commodities, disposable commodities. The ecosystem is a disposable commodity. And uh, they, will, they will put, now with no impediments, they will push and push and push. It makes Herman Melville's Moby Dick, which I'm just rereading, the most prescient study of the American character because we're all on the Pequod. And Ahab's running the ship. And as Ahab said, my means and my methods are sane and my object is mad. And... Uh, they're not going to stop themselves. The formal mechanisms of power are not going to stop them. It's up to us. And, and literally, you know, I have a, a, a five-year-old, and his favorite book is Out of the Blue. He'll sit on the floor and look at narwhals and porpoises, and every time I see him do it, it rips my heart out. Because I know that if there is not a radical change in our relationship to each other and to the planet, every single one of those sea creatures will be dead within his lifetime. Yeah. In... In theological terms, as a seminary graduate, these are forces of death, literally. Well, well and, 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 and it which, is which is the corporation arguing, you know, or, or lobbying for, you know, Section 1021 of the all NDAA? Of them. All of them. You know, it, Who writes our legislation? But corporate lobbyists. The security and surveillance state is the mechanism. Look, we have not far from here, a few blocks from here, a joint command center with the NYPD and Goldman Sachs. I was arrested in front of Goldman Sachs with the Occupy movement. And, and let me tell you that when, they, when the security came out, it was a mixed security of Goldman Sachs security and NYPD security. Um, uh, these corporations have created 70% of our, we have 16 intelligence agencies, and as Jeremy Scahill has pointed out, 70% of their work are outsourced to corporations. We have handed the capacity for the security and surveillance state to private corporations. Chris Hedges is the Pulitzer Prize winning former New York Times correspondent who has sued President Obama over the National Defense Authorization Act, the NDAA. Uh, others involved in that suit are Noam Chomsky, Cornel West, Daniel Ellsberg. The suit is known as Hedges versus Obama. Before Thanks so much for watching this report from Democracy Now!, your daily independent global news hour. We don't accept advertising or corporate funding, but rather rely on donations from viewers like you. Please make your contribution by visiting democracynow.org. We need your support today to keep bringing you this hard-hitting, in-depth reporting.